because your agents will always tell you oh you can walk and this mm-hmm. no your friends your friends don't even want to help you they want to gain from you that's just one I'm thing you have to know like even friends that have yeah. they still want to gain from so, you yeah. people went through hell because they couldn't transfer they couldn't go anywhere mm. because they signed a contract that they thought was going to benefit them, them yeah and boom it doesn't <laughs> Okay, guys, welcome to uh, my channel. Today we have a special guest in our midst. His name is Olumayowa Bello. So, for for uh, people that actually want to go to the Caribbean, um, you have to be careful. And yeah, we are not actually to trying to discourage you. There are still some like decent. Yeah, now nah, mind there. you, the thing is just that. See, if you really want to go to the Caribbean, mm. there are a lot of schools there. I would say pay a big attention to accreditation yeah, yeah so because this is something that even happens in you know your country itself where people actually study courses that are not accredited by yeah, some yeah. certain bodies yeah, so yeah. like these things really play a very big role in yeah. it so uh, because i have some couple of friends out there in in the caribbean they can't even get hospitals to do clinical rotations on the caribbean I mean, in true. the Caribbean, so they have to like go to Jamaica because the hospitals are not accredited. Like, it's not up to standard. They no. couldn't get ECFMG uh, accreditation because of uh, lack of quality hospitals, you know, on the island. So they have to go to Jamaica or US or Canada or UK for for clinical rotation. So that's too expensive, coupled with the already expensive tuition fee. Mind you, yeah. So you literally pay like thousands of dollars within four months yeah. in a year you pay like very high amount of money when literally it will be just so funny if, like when you do your research yeah. this amount you literally pay in the caribbean on a monthly basis yeah. or every four months of your semester mm-hmm. you can also pay this thing outside in a well-developed yeah, exactly, country exactly yeah. um so outside academics now let's talk about um welfareism let's talk about you know the standard of living as compared to cost of living how expensive is um, the caribbean so um same, most of these islands are very similar in terms of cost of living yeah yeah but so, Barbados is more expensive it's more expensive right so yeah. i'm talking about people spending ec like for example uh dominica mm-hmm. saint vincent yeah. uh, trinidad for example yeah so they are kind of similar in terms of cost of living yeah for so, you was it like really expensive for you it's okay so <laughs> you know sometimes you just have to add sentiments <laughs> to things yeah. so for me when i got there yeah the agent guy didn't tell me anything about how expensive housing could be yeah. so is and mind you everybody needs to have this at the back of their mind don't think you're gonna work to survive you won't no, you can't no, have no. access Definitely you have no. to depend don't on listen access. to any agent you have to you. they will tell you oh once you get there you, you know you figure your way out life, you can so work trust me the highest you can do is just your personal business maybe yeah. you're cooking for people and there are like thousands of people doing that before you so yeah, you have yeah, to be yeah. like top notch mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. that but for me when I got there and they told me how much my apartment will be because yeah. I was still in quarantine mm-hmm. then and okay. I was still looking for houses mm-hmm. and stuff. And they said for my room, I would have to pay 600 EC, which was probably about 300 US, US as a then. Yeah, that time. Yeah. Then, so, because it was 2.64, I don't know what it is right now. Yeah. But then I was like, that's a lot of money mm-hmm. from where i come from that's yeah, yeah, a, a year for like it's a two-bedroom yeah, bro. Yeah, and you want me to pay this for like one month mm-hmm. and then i'm like okay you know it's fine that's cool you got to keep it going you yeah. don't dwell on mm-hmm. the problem you have to always look for the solution and with time you even see people who live in more expensive houses that you actually yeah. do and so an average then you pay was 300 bucks mm-hmm. and that was an average like your apartment is just there yeah but just normal just, standard, they, just yeah. normal standard was like 300 so people paid 600 people paid 800 usd wow so there are a lot of people that wanted to live their life my dad was in a politician so. <laughs> and the cost the cost of all these apartments like is it worth it in terms of the cost and the quality that you get is it worth it you, it's not it's I, won't, not, I won't really yeah? lie to mm. you anybody it's not it's yeah. not it's not so it's like a shared apartment right so you have 
um, let's say like four bedroom, like for example, the house I lived in, four, five bedrooms, right? Mm-hmm. So, and each of us, we paid 250 USD equivalents. So mm-hmm. I think about 600 uh, EC, mm-hmm. something like that. For four bed? For each each room. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah, for, yeah. So that's yeah. like that's like two grand. Exactly. So that's like that's like one thousand dollars. So, so that's about two thousand something. Minus bills so. and everything else. That was. That's for another me, thing. It's, it's not worth it. It's all. not. It's yeah. not. And God doing good. You have a housemate that is not reasonable. <laughs> that doesn't know how to economize. <laughs> then you're stuck. Then you're stuck because, yeah. yes, though you understand, they provide you with bed. Yeah. They say they provide you with. They give you this idea. So literally, for me, they are charging this fees like you're staying in a hotel, hotel. as a tourist, exactly, exactly, not, not as a not student. As, exactly. You understand? Yeah. And then it is really bad because these schools that they actually tell you, "Oh, we're taking you somewhere." Mm-hmm. They don't have a standardized no apartment. Special, like, um, okay, this belongs to the school. Exactly, this is how exactly. you're going to live. Then, yeah. if you decide to go out, mm-hmm. that's on you. Yeah, yeah. You there's, no, there's no such problem. There's nothing yeah. like that. Yeah. There's nothing like that. So, and the uh, indigenous are not paying the same amount. They are not paying the same as, yeah. as foreigners. Yep. Yeah. yeah, because once you get yourself acquainted with the whole environment, mm-hmm. you start talking with people. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this is how much I pay. Yeah. So, mind you, they know you're a foreigner. So, only those who have good hearts will tell you, oh, they are cheating you. You can yeah, go to this yeah, place and yeah, get so so yeah, thing. Yeah. So, indigenous don't pay that much they pay because so, yeah. they can't even afford. Where you. <laughs> I was paying my room, then I was pay. I was meant to be paying about six hundred EC. With my mm-hmm. housemate was also six hundred mm-hmm. okay. EC as I then excluding utilities and. I spoke to someone and someone was like, no, 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 no. I said, nah, man, nah, man, you know, in the accent. Yeah, and they were like, the talk, yeah. said, I pay 400 for this. I'm like, wow, you pay 400? He mm. said, yeah. I said, pay 400. And his apartment was nice. Yeah. And I was like, wow. So I did, So they are really charging you like a tourist. They're yeah, making like money tourist, off yeah. you. Yeah. So if you're going to the Caribbean, I would rather you say just do your research very well because this is more or less like, it's business oriented. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, it. Yeah, you can. It's not like you're going there to start a future and go yeah. to bloom out. No. Yeah. So for you guys that want to, that are planning to go there, uh, one thing I will tell you right now is there are so many students, uh, in the Caribbean that are actually looking for ways to, to get out of of the. They are stuck. They've been there for, for ages. So fun fact is, mm-hmm. let's be sincere, if you know, you really want to go to the Caribbean, mm. I would advise you, just go to a private school in Nigeria, get your degree, yeah, yeah. and go out Trust of the me. country when you're Trust done. me. It's, it's facts, because Generally, can, it's not what it's, I'm not going to lie. It's an opinion, but, you know, I, I think it's an informed opinion as well, you know, because we've been there. That's it. It's yeah. We were talking from experience, and yeah, it's yeah. not like everyone literally wants to, if you even want proof, you can always, like, call, text people, and yeah, like, hey, can you, sh- to find out Don't what exactly you do because your agents will always tell you, oh, you can walk and this. Mm-hmm. No. So there's a part of thing they don't literally explain to us back home over yeah, there is yeah. that when you're in a foreign land, you're in a foreign land. Yeah. You have to obey the rules. Yeah, you yeah. can't take over their economy. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm, not mm-hmm. possible. Yeah. So imagine we have 150. St. Vincent as a then was maybe had like 100,000 100, people. 100,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they literally of, know. They know everyone. There was get, a time I was actually sleeping in the bus. And they, they, they were like, hey, guy, this is your house, your, your home. Yeah. They know where you're living. They, they know everybody. So it's like, it's, it's small. It's, yeah, very, very small. It's very, very small. Yeah. So out of 100,000 people, you have about four or five medical schools mm-hmm. there. Each school has about 200, 150, let's, let's say an average of 100. Yeah. So that like 500 people out of a out of 100,000 people. Let's say average of 300 people are looking for yeah, jobs. Yeah, yeah. So, no, you're not. How many jobs are there? That's <laughs> the first question. Like, how do these people make their own money too? Yeah, so. exactly. So, be careful, guys. And um, if you know you have a lot of money to, to spend, you can go to the Caribbean like, because you know you can, like, leave whenever you want to leave. So, trust me, once you have... It's you. If you have that money, you yeah. know, you can always leave, go back. Yeah. So, we had people that did it then, you yeah. know. They kind of come to the Caribbean and say, like, oh, I don't like this. They go back, they travel out of the country, and some people are there for, like, a long time, and they realize that, okay, you know what, I think I have messed up, and I'm yeah, not making yeah. any progress. Mm-hmm. And their parents fly them. But 
if you know that your parents <laughs> is you know the kind of parents you, you have they're right? helping you out you know no, you don't. don't really want to make that mistake because yeah. is once you're out of that country trust me it's a whole new lifestyle yeah entirely you have to depend on someone and the thing is even if people really want to try to help you out they can't help you out that much yeah yeah you grab. Mm-hmm. so you, there's nothing like oh i can speak to this your friends your friends don't even want to help you they want to gain from you that's just one I'm thing you have to know like even friends that have yeah. they still want to gain from so, you yeah, so you that's just it. you have to be really careful yeah right? so um so so many students are actually moving from the caribbean to to europe uh, right now and so i'll actually ask you guys to consider going to um, europe especially eastern part of europe uh maybe georgia or or ukraine or russia For they're europe. not perfect but you know the living condition over there is better and it's more. less expensive trust me you know um in saint vincent in a in a let's let's say md1 for example yeah how much how much is the attrition fee so now so things everything. are things have really changed mm-hmm. then as a then i think um so they kind of conf- convince you also with yeah. something they're like okay they are giving you a certain Sc- percentage right? of so let me start by asking you about the scholarship in in the Caribbean. They they promise your scholarship. They get you to sign a certain contract. Yep. Saying, oh, our tuition fee is, um, for example, eleven thousand dollars every year. Yeah. But we can offer you scholarship and uh, reduce it to how much? Ah. Uh. So I think they kind of give you, they tell you, they give you like a $4,000 yeah, $4, scholarship, scholarship for, for or whatever, something. every, the scholarship you didn't actually have to go apply, for. apply for, nothing, you're not even aware. So automatically you, you are under scholarship. That's it. So it's brainwashing. So what yeah. they tell you is, okay, you know, we have a document like this mm-hmm. and we are offering you scholarship. That is what your agent will tell, will tell you, you literally. Yeah. And you'd be like, yes, mommy, daddy, and this. So. Mind you, let me tell you, there's no scholarship that's giving you anything free. Nothing. You have to always work for it. Yeah, Write an yeah. essay. Tell me why you want yeah, the scholarship. Yeah. But this one, they just offer it to you. So that's where you know that, okay, you should start suspecting that something, something is wrong. Is wrong yeah. But we will feel like, oh, this is to our advantage and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Now, mind you, that scholarship is read before you actually sign. Yeah. So because once you see that, okay, you know, I have to do the scholarship and you're like, let me just take this yeah. down. And you want to transfer they will ask you to pay back, pay back the money you owe. Yeah. So imagine you were offered a six a four thousand dollar scholarship every year, and the total was like twelve thousand yeah. dollars. So you literally have to pay back the rest of the amount, yeah. which is like eight grand. So you pay eight. Let's say you pay eight grand, and your first semester you're like, okay, you know what? I need my unofficial transcript yeah. so I could transfer to another yeah. school. Yeah. And then they boom, they threaten you like, okay, you know what? You can't. You can't, you can't turn. You yeah. can't transfer because yeah. you know you need this you, you need, need to, to pay, pay this exactly this so you need to pay off the so scholarship that's, that's because we condition. offered this to you mm-hmm. thinking you were going to be so it's like a conditional offer so you can't leave our university until you graduate like you can't leave you're stuck then there. if you must leave then you have to pay back the scholarship yes right you're stuck there oh my god and after md5 you want to start your clinical rotation the tuition fee literally double so you start paying about seven thousand dollars so, every time. Sorry, every time. Not so I year. don't. I don't know if you knew about it. As at then, there were some certain students that actually were from I think Portacot or Rivers, mm-hmm. and they had this scholarship issue, you know, with the government of Nigeria then yeah. and the school. Yeah. So they withheld the students. They didn't really care whether the government it was the government's fault or yeah, not. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't the fault of the okay. students though. Mm. They wrote petitions, they sent it to newspapers that you know people are stranded. I have proof. So literally if you wanna yeah, yeah. tell me I can refer you to students, let them tell you how they felt, what happened. Yeah. People went through hell because they couldn't transfer, they couldn't go anywhere mm. because they signed a contract that they thought was gonna benefit them. them. Yeah. And boom. It doesn't yeah and these people didn't care for like a whole year because they were like it's not our fault it's your government's fault yeah, you yeah. know if they are not paying so you have to pay out of pocket now and if you're paying out of pocket because they signed the agreement with the government, government not with yeah, not with you yeah. you grab mm-hmm. so you're paying the real normal tuition fee yeah, you're not yeah, even yeah. paying you yeah. <laughs> 
You understand? It's that's crazy, what that's like number one scam right yeah, there. Yeah. You, you really don't So it's calm. This scholarship is calm. Like, fast. So don't let no one... If for me, One thing everybody needs to know is anything outside the country, if they tell you, okay, we are giving you a scholarship, mm. just know you have to present something. An yeah. essay, you have to write something, yeah. you have to present Maybe something. Maybe because of like, your performance in your in previous... You understand academic, the high You understand? School, like, yeah, if yeah. they say they are, okay, they are provide. They, they will tell you why they are providing you this scholarship, scholarship. Yeah. not because why you qualify for, for exactly this your agent might be like oh write an essay let us submit an essay for you why you want to be a medical it's doctor bro that's like english 101 <laughs> you grab, so, so you don't basically want you have to um make your research uh be sure before you go to the caribbean for me mm-hmm. is just do your research i'm not really going to mention schools like hey don't go to these places yeah. don't do this don't do that but I would just advise you is before you leave your country, yeah. make sure you do that research properly very well. Mm. And make sure that yes, they have you have to pay attention to things like accreditation. Yeah. You have to make sure and the thing is don't dwell on what we because they will give you what you want to see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You understand? They'll say, oh, they have 95%. Very, I'm telling you, the Caribbean medical school, they have a very strong PR. Bro, and the thing is, once they give you that C, that C view, I'm telling yo, you, that's, bro, it. that's a lie. <laughs> it's black sand. It's not, it's not the sand you get there. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, pay attention to accreditation. Yeah. Pay attention to the fees. Yeah. Don't think you will ever work, please. That's the no, mistake no, no, a lot no. of people do. Yeah, no, nah, okay. you're going to depend on people back yeah, home. Yeah. So if you know concerning accommodations and stuff things are tight don't be like just go to a private school mm-hmm. finish up with something yeah. and then you can start working your way postgraduate yeah. take your time this medicine of a thing a lot of us thought yeah medicine i'll become a doctor at 21 22, 25. <laughs> let me know i happened to i visited in a hospital one time like that and the dude was from i think trinidad or something okay. like that and he said he finished his engineering degree, but he decided to pursue mm-hmm. medicine because he said back there, he said he didn't trust all the med schools and stuff. Okay, so, okay. the dude is 32. He just started MD1. Wow. <laughs> so, it's... I, I it's, actually had a friend too. Then, um, I don't know, maybe he'll be watching this video. <laughs> He's for, he was 46? Yeah, no, nah, bro. It's yeah. no lies. We had, yeah, I had, I I had it's people... It's medical school. Like, it, anybody I, I, can there was, medical school. We played soccer over there because yeah. that was the only thing that kept our yeah. depression out. Yeah. And we had <laughs> people that were 50 in yeah, MD1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, so don't think like, oh, uh, this no, is an opportunity for me fun. to finish. No, no, no. Medicine, you can't be, you can't be done with it. It's a forever process. Yeah, you have yeah. to take exams. You need breaks it to take the exams. To age, like whatsoever. No, you need breaks to take the exams. Mm. You need time. You have to space yourself. You yeah. can't rush it. Yeah, no. You rush it, you will fail. Because the reason why is, I won't lie to you. You see, people who actually go to like European schools. Mm and caribbean schools so caribbean schools people who go to caribbean schools mostly those are like personal efforts mm-hmm. right people who go to like european schools united states schools and stuff that is like personal effort plus, plus exposure yeah, exactly you understand so is the exposure there that can make you compete with ivy league schools yeah, yeah. because if you don't have that exposure trust me they and will sideline you they don't have struggling. time yeah, yeah. so if they tell you you will practice in the united states once you get here and you see the materials exposure of things the people yeah. do things with ease you yeah. understand yeah. and then you have to struggle you because struggle. Yeah. they didn't teach you you can imagine using one cadaver for like <laughs> six semesters nobody really will. i mean that's okay in case they really want to teach you but you don't even have access because the room is little. Yeah. You grab. But here is so funny. Even with COVID happening and mm-hmm. stuff, I told you about schools yeah. and stuff. Like they send you all your materials to your house. Yeah. So you have to literally record a video of you making the dissection itself. Mm. So it's not like someone will just tell you, oh, we have to save this cadaver for no, the no, next semester. No, no. But no, they ship you one, one, like they ship it to your house. Wow. You understand? And if they want you to come, to see something all together they will come, to come and they will tell you these are the requirements you have to do this is the amount of courses you have to mm-hmm. take mm-hmm. and this is but there over there in the caribbean they'll be like okay this is the courses you take in this class this yeah, courses yeah. you take in this class and then trust me 
exam wise you can't really stand because you dwell more on past yeah, questions I'm telling you. so finally let's talk about um the exams in the caribbean yeah yeah so um they conduct exams every is it every month block exams yeah so yeah? block so it's four months in a in, in a, a semester trimester not semester so yeah. they have three terms right? three terms yeah so let's so just say three semester three let's put it let's just say class because <laughs> <laughs> they don't do your first semester your second semester or stuff mm-hmm, like that mm-hmm. because you understand so here they'll be like okay i mean year one yeah, i mean yeah. year, year two year, year, one, year three year, two, year, year four yeah. you grab mm-hmm. but over there is like same, i mean md1 md2 md3 md4 so you think you're making progress you're not making shit <laughs> <laughs> you're in the same year you are still in the same year you grab yeah, yeah. so is the thing is the exams are what you you will read and they'll tell you oh read this read this yeah, really hard yeah. you need to know this they give you a syllabus, you know, standard wise. This mm-hmm. is how this is going to be. This is how this is going to be. And then you just figure out when you start. So the pre-med is good. Then when you start getting to pre-med 3, pre-med 4, you start knowing that, okay, you know what? I think I'm getting into this real life stuff. Yeah, so yeah. those are things you you should have started reading and known mm-hmm. very well. And when you get to MD1, the basic things you're supposed to know, because the exam was set on was set based on you know let me just let my people yeah, go yeah, yeah. and see if they yeah. read and if they know so this. basically they give you past questions literally so, so of of the previous set sets sets right so you go through this so this is not question, one yeah. you memorize it and you go and download it like you that's it might not come out like that but yeah, we put like 80 80 percent 80 percent will come out so it's just like they tell you oh tire is a girl yeah and last two sets the next one is Jennifer is a girl. Okay. The next set. So the, it's not actually the, a true test of knowledge. It's not. I'm not really gonna lie yeah. because just few. Though let's let's be sincere though. Some lecturers will give you that standardized test. Yeah. Some lecturers yeah, some don't really yeah, yeah. care about you like that. You understand? <laughs> because they they don't want you to fall back on them. Some have conscience. Yeah. But some are just like I don't really want to go through this whole stress. Yeah. Just go read the back of this page. Mm-hmm. Come back to the exam hall. You're gone. And then. These things they affect you, yeah. whereby once you get to the clinical scenario, mm-hmm. they throw a question. Yeah, you can't yeah. answer. So that you're going to have a, because a you weak foundation. Yeah, you grab yeah. because you didn't read to to know really what you're know, doing to understand the yes, concepts. Yeah. So that is the thing is many people with that go to Caribbean schools. If you're not careful, mm-hmm. they just read to pass, pass. Yeah. and go, mm-hmm. not read to know. Mm-hmm. So they will. You have problems where you yeah, get to like yeah, yeah, sure. standard hospitals mm-hmm. and you're like okay what is this i mean i've had personal scenarios you see it literally you see like md4 md5 guys what am i saying you see like md6 m7 yeah. people who are rotation doing clinical guys, rotations yeah. they can't answer basic anatomy wow they can't wow so uh, so and the thing is you can't blame them mm-hmm. why because that's they the studied system, right? to pass. Yeah, that's the system. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that is they have to so then it they say, Oh, this class is hard because now you're in M the six, M the seven, you have to go and study what you learned back oh, in no, M the one yeah, from yeah, beginning. Yeah. yeah. Because you have a bad foundation. Yeah. Yeah, so and you already know if your foundation is weak, definitely you can it's complete crumble. it yourself. It, it's crumble. <laughs> it's, and it. Hence you have so many students get stuck. Not because of financial reasons. But because uh, they struggle to pass the MBME, and um, in the Caribbean you have to pass the MBME. Um, was it MD five? Yeah, yeah. So after uh, yeah, MD five, right? So mentioned. for you to progress to clinical rotation, you, you need, need to pass to the so, MBME. Yeah. So the MBME basically is like um, a test to, like an assessment uh, tool so, to yeah. know where you stand before you write the USMLE. But in the Caribbean Medical School, they use this test to actually check. Uh, they are students, the level of their students, still an assessment to, yeah. to know they are ready for the USMLE. Mm-hmm. Why are they doing this? They are doing this because of the reputation of the university. They want to maintain the, um, what's it called? The passing rate of exactly. the USMLE. So they use that like to get rid of bad the bad eggs. Yeah, so be, be, before it was like 50, I guess. And mm-hmm. now I hear it's like 70 Seven, for you yeah, yeah, to yeah, 70 plus. No. Literally um, yeah. progress to the clinical mm-hmm. stage. But let's be sincere. If they literally made people know this earlier, yeah, you know, a lot of people. So 
people are just like you know what i just want to get 70 and that's it yeah yeah, yeah. So, so 70 is the passing um mark, mark. yeah so you need minimum. to have like minimum of 70 mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. go above but trust me you really want to work hard than that because once USMLE, you just figure out like your 70 with USMLE means like a 20% <laughs> or whatever you know. <laughs> like a it, it means, it means I think about 190 something. And it's, you're not, you're not, um, I mean, that is 190 something with yeah. like, I, for me, I feel like 190 something with extra effort. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, grab, yeah. So, and you need like 200 and something. Yeah, I mean, and yeah. shout out to those who have been, you know, putting this extra yeah, effort themselves yeah. and kicking all the stuff in. So basically, um, that's all we've got for you guys uh, today. Yep. Um, you can make your own research. We are just seeing uh, all these things based on experience. So you can also make your own research. Um, be aware of all the tactics uh, by uh, deployed by the agents and also the PR team of these universities. Yeah. I I won't be surprised if um, this video is shared somewhere and uh, the university come after. Trust me, because I've read so many things on Reddit, they come after the um, the blogger, right? Mm-hmm. They reply posts. That's the reason. I think they pay people all over to actually monitor certain. That's why I said I will have a very strong PRT. You grab, mm-hmm. so it's you don't really want to spoil another yeah, person's yeah, exactly. business. Someone's business. Well, yeah. hey, let me tell you, if, if you're planning a getaway trip and still want to land, <laughs> you know, you can always go there. But exactly. That's it. Yeah. Because you pay everything like you're a tourist. Yeah, yeah, so definitely. you're the definitely. things you do there, like mm-hmm. you're a tourist. You're not shown love and all of that. Yeah. yeah. yeah so. so, guys, uh, please, um, if you have any question, drop it in the uh, comments uh, yeah, section ask below. Ask questions. Yeah, so know. I'm going to drop his um, Instagram handle. It will be on the screen right now. Yeah. And also you can give him a follow and also me too thank you very much guys and we'll see you again in the next one peace all right thank you do have a blessed day